All right. Welcome to the virtual college exploration for all West Virginia students sponsored by the West Virginia Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admission Officers and StriveScan. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of the many different sessions we have happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule at wvacrao.org. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at the same website, wvacrao.org. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to our presenter. Hi everyone, give me just a moment to share my screen. All right, so my name is Emily Hulis. I'm one of the admission counselors at Columbus College of Art and Design. Um, we are located in Columbus, Ohio, which is pretty much dead center in the state. My role is to help you through the college admissions process. So me and my colleagues will help students just like you learn more about your college options and potential career paths. We help you build a better portfolio for your application to CCAD and navigate the financial aid process. So um, we would love for you guys to join our mailing list to learn more about us. We'd like to learn more about you. So if you're watching this on a computer or a tablet, you can grab your phone, take a picture of this QR code. It'll take you to a form to join our mailing list. And I will show this code again at the end, but let me give you just a minute in case you want to head to the website now. All right, so CCAD at a glance. We are a private nonprofit art and design college located in downtown Columbus. We are one of the oldest art and design colleges in the country. We are founded in 1879, so we just had our 140th birthday last year. We have a student to faculty ratio of nine to one, which means that our classes are small enough that you receive personal attention from professors, but large enough that you're able to discuss and receive constructive feedback about your pieces. At CCAD, you will graduate with a BFA or Bachelor of Fine Arts within your chosen major. In a BFA program, your curriculum is more studio-based, combining your artistic practice with liberal arts courses. At CCAD, two-thirds of your curriculum is studio-based and one-third is liberal arts courses. There's a lot going on in the city of Columbus, but we also have a lot to do on campus as well. We want you to have your own unique experience that draws from the things that interest you the most. Um, and one of the best ways that you can do that is through our different student-led clubs, organizations, and our student government. There are a variety of groups to choose from, and you can be a part of more than one. Most students join a student collective, which is a group based around each major, to gather students from all years for fun events, extra practice sessions, alumni speakers, and casual social events. Uh, and while organizations are a huge part of your student life, there are other student life resources that are important as well. First is our on-campus housing. We have two on-campus housing options. Most of our first year students live in our shot and scene residence hall. So that is a suite that is shared by four people. So there are two bedrooms, each with two people. And then those four people share a bathroom in the common area. And then for upper year students, you can either move off campus or we have the design square apartments. Those are more of apartment style um, housing options and they have a little kitchenette. Some other important resources while you're at CCAD include our advising office. They help you schedule your classes. We have creative coaches, which is our peer tutoring program. Um, we have a counseling and wellness center where students are able to receive free counseling sessions and the learning support office for any students who need accommodations due to disabilities or learning differences. And if there are any campus resources that you're curious about, we haven't covered, feel free to pop those in the Q&A at the bottom and I'll get to those at the end. So we have 11 different majors here at Columbus College of Art and Design. Um, and we are going to talk about them in three different groups today. They tend to fall into three different groups depending on the work that you are creating. In addition to your major, you can also add a minor. Um, every major is also available as a minor. And then we have some additional minors that are listed here on the screen. 
Um, a minor is an additional field of study outside your choice of major. Our minors require 15 credits, which is about five classes. Um, these are a few of the options that we offer, and minors are optional. You don't have to choose one. So we offer outstanding collaborative learning partnerships for talented students, expert faculty, and forward-thinking organizations to solve the real-world challenges of today and tomorrow. This year alone, our corporate and community partnerships help organize 24 projects and 28 courses with approximately 400 students working alongside organizations like Airstream, Cardinal Health, This One Dress, Madison USA, and others. We also have an outstanding career services office that helps students find internships and full-time jobs, as well as helping you build your resume, teach interview skills, and helping artists develop their own personal creative brand. We also hold an awesome recruiting on campus series that invites employers from companies like Pixar, Under Armour, and Fisher Price to come to campus and give presentations, host networking events, review portfolios, and even interview students. Uh, lastly, career services also manages the CCAD job board, which is, which is a huge list of creative careers, internships, paid competitions, and on-campus jobs. And this job board is available to students even after they graduate. So these type of opportunities are just one of the benefits of attending an art school over a more traditional university that happens to have an art program. So these statistics are based on a survey of, uh, grad, of art school graduates. So as you can see, the vast majority of art and design alumni who responded to this survey had an overall positive experience in college. It, almost 90% of them are satisfied with their current work. 80% said their first job was out of their first job out of college was related to their major, which is amazing. And 16% of them had started their own business, which is much higher than the 4% of the general population. So to talk more in depth about our majors, um, we say the most important question to ask yourself is what do you want to create every day? So the first group falls into students who are, bringing, who are interested in bringing original characters to life, shaping a narrative, and inventing new worlds. And that is, that's what our first group of majors falls into. So majors include animation, our new comics and narrative practice, our new game art and design major, and illustration. In these programs, you will have access to top of the line technology, tools, and studio spaces. One of the coolest things we have on campus is our stop motion lab, which has 14 individual workstations, each with its own camera and lighting equipment. This is the only facility of its kind in the US, and it dedicates a specific stop motion space for you to work alongside your peers and your professor. So all of the projects here are student work done in classes. Um, you can find more examples of student work and their social media handles in our view book. Um, but here we have, um, this first one is an animation lab project, second is a comic book illustration, and the third is a 3D illustration. So learning opportunities like these are one of the ways that CCAD helps students gain the skills that they need to become whatever they want to be. We have alumni that have graduated and have become award-winning illustra illustrators, prototypers, or even concept artists. Our students capitalize on many different types of opportunities, both before and after graduation. Some have developed resources for NASA, while others have made the art for rock stars, uh, tour posters, or produced Pixar movies like Onward. So here we have a um, CCAD alum who did the illustrations for a book. Um, that was Katura Bobo. And then we have uh, Jessica Razor who worked with NASA and Dan Scanlon, who joined Pixar Animations in uh, September 2001. He worked as a storyboard artist and then work, went on to work on um, Onward, which is the most recent Pixar movie. And then two more examples of student alumni work. Um, Shay Beagle is a recent grad from CCAD. They expanded upon a comic originally made for our comic anthology that we produce every year. They sold their comic idea to Image Comics. It's an eight-part series called Moonstruck. And one of our professors served as editor. And then Logan Schmidt, um, 
He has attracted commissions from Dave Matthews Band, the Abbott Brothers, Old Crow Medicine Show, Van Morrison, and others. He began by reaching out to bands coming through Columbus and offering to make posters for their shows, and he is now a full-time freelance illustrator. And you can buy alumni work at the CCAD art sale that happens every semester. So we have one in May and one in December. Um, this was available online this past spring semester and we are planning for it to be online as well. So even if you can't make it to Columbus, you can still check it out and buy some student art. Our second group of majors is for the artist who is interested in developing personalized products, specialized spaces, and unique messages that have a global impact. So this group includes our interior architecture and design, industrial design, fashion design, and advertising and graphic design majors. Uh, these majors pro provide students with the opportunity to make products and spaces that they're passionate about while partnering with real world companies. This gives students the experience of working in the industry and helps them forge connections for the future. Recently in a special topics course, some of our industrial design and fashion design students went to Chile to collaborate with and learn from the company Citrana, a leather goods company. Um, they specialize in men's footwear. So students worked with designers from this company to develop shoe designs. They then traveled to Chile over spring break and worked in the company's workshops alongside the professional shoemakers. Each student was able to use their shoe forms to make a custom pair of shoes of their own design and one student's design was chosen to be mass produced by the company. The advertising and graphic design department also regularly partners with real world clients, whether it's tackling layouts, copywriting, typography, web design, or even UX, UI. You get to try your hand at a number of skill sets and build a diverse portfolio, all while gaining critical feedback from industry professionals. So, these photos, this top one is of the um, shoe design work that went on in Chile. The second one is a um, campaign for the company Bando, which is designed by a student who will graduate this coming May. Um, number three is from a fashion design student's thesis collection. Number four is another senior thesis from an um, interior architecture and design student. So your passion could make you a designer of clothing, cars, or costumes. Your passion plus the skills you'll learn at CCAD will leave you ready to reinvent how and where people live life, what they wear, and how they interact with one another. From vegan accessories to product packaging, web apps, or children's toys, there is a market for ingenuity. Um, so this top picture is a uh, series called 100 Days, 100 Mugs by Lily Stamps, who graduated in 2017. Um, she works for a local design agency, but also has her own small business called Lolly Lolly Ceramics. Uh, the second picture is from an industrial design graduate who created a vegan sustainable handbag brand. Um, she lives in New York. She was intending to study fine arts, but when she heard that industrial design was one of the toughest majors on campus, she signed up. Um, and then our alum, Chris Walter, has designed a lot of toys for little tykes, a lot of them that you would probably recognize, like these little tykes cars. Um, he eventually moved on to design real cars with Ford, and he is the lead designer on the current Ford Fusion. Sorry about that. And then two more alumni, uh, Susanna Madrid was the winner of the CCAD Creative Entrepreneur Award last year. She moved to Milano, Italy to pursue her graduate degree in fashion design. She had the opportunity to design shoes for Neil Barrett and she fell in love with the design and production process and was inspired to launch her own luxury shoe line. Um, you can buy them online at SusannaMadrid.com. You can also find them at a boutique in Ohio. And then Audrey Stemmen um, was named our Outstanding Advertising and Graphic Design Senior last year. She was the director of our Design Student Collective and designed for our student agency. Our student agency designed all of the admissions uh, materials. So if you get postcards from us, if you see our view book, anything that comes from admissions was designed by them. So our third group of majors is students who are interested in discovering the conceptual practices of art, 
exploring a vast number of styles and mediums, all while becoming a cultural influencer. So the majors that fall into this grouping are photography, film and video, and fine arts. Uh, we will teach you the rules of the game and then provide you with the freedom to break them. So students have the opportunities to challenge cultural conceptions, devote themselves to an active artistic practice and influence society. Columbus has a really active art, music, film, and entertainment scene that provides students ample room to explore and experiment in the real world with skills they learn at CCAD before they even graduate. So one of these examples is the Columbus International Film and Animation Festival, which is the oldest film fest in the US. It showcases independent student and professional films from around the world um, and showcases world-class independent films. It's presented by CCAD, so it's right here in central Ohio. On campus, we have four different gallery spaces, including our world-renowned Beeler Gallery. We also have a part of town called the Short North Arts District, which showcases homegrown and international talents, and the indie art scene thrives at old converted warehouses like 400 West Rich in Millwork Art Studios. You can also check out the Vanderbilt Room a Gallery, one of many founded by CCAD alum that was named one of the 10 best galleries in Columbus by local news channel WCMH in 2019. And then our campus is also right next door to the Columbus Museum of Art, which features several permanent collections as well as rotating exhibits. Entrance into the museum is free with your student ID. And again, this is all student work uh, done in classes. So we have a digital photography example um, this is made of aqua resin cloth and a mannequin, and then these are stills of a documentary. So CCAD and the Columbus's art scene provides students with chances to network and develop relationships with individuals within the industry. We know that when it comes to being a successful artist, it's not only about what you know, but also who you know. If you're a student that is interested in writing scripts, you can meet with alums who are um, independent filmmakers, screenwriters, and novelists. We have one alum, Angelo Thomas, who graduated just this past year. His film, The Incredible Jake Parker, was just released last month and is based on a novel he wrote with the same title. Um, the cover art that you see here was done by a fellow CCAD student, Casey Nwakudu, who graduated in animation in May. If you're interested in making and selling your own art, you might want to meet our alum, Megan Matthey, who creates and sells ornamental glass called Happy Thought Bubbles, which is down here. Um, or jewelry designer, Maddie Etter. Re meeting the right people can really change the entire course of your career development. And then two other examples. Um, Jessica Phelps is a great example of the importance of storytelling and photojournalism. She was named Newspaper Photographer of the Year by the Pictures of the Year International Competition for her work on behalf of the Newark Advocate in Central Ohio. Her winning portfolio included a long-term project on an Iraqi family that resettled in Ohio after the father had worked as a translator for the US military. Her story followed the journey of this family raising their three children as Americans, but with an appreciation of their Iraqi heritage. And then Jake Mason Macklin is a fine arts graduate. He participated in the prestigious Skohegan program, which is an intensive nine week summer residency program for emerging visual artists. During his time at CCAD, Jake was really interested in the expansion of his hometown of Columbus and focused primarily on the use of found objects and large installation works. His thesis consisted of patchworking large found scraps of tarps printed with construction advertisements for luxury developments around the city. So in terms of next steps, if you are a high school senior right now, um, we would love to connect with you. Right now, we are only doing virtual appointments, appointments, tours, and portfolio reviews via Zoom. We are not on campus, so we're not able to do an on-campus tour right now. Um, now is also a good time to start finalizing your portfolio, which is required of all CCAD applicants. I'm going to go into that a little bit further after this. Um, another great way to get feedback on your portfolio is by attending a virtual National Portfolio Day. There are several of those left this year. They are a great way to get free 15 minute reviews on your portfolio from a variety of art schools all over the country. We will be at most of them. You can go to the CCAD admissions event page for more information. 
And then once your portfolio is set, it's time to apply. So you can apply right now online through our website directly or through the Common App. Uh, there are two main deadlines to keep in mind. The December 1st early application deadline, which will guarantee you an admissions decision before winter break, but it's not binding, it's not early action. Um, and then we have a February 1st priority application deadline, which automates, automatically makes you eligible for all of our merit scholarships. Uh, in order to apply, we require a short essay, about 300 to 500 words, an unofficial or official transcript with the GPA. Uh, so your portfolio, your essay, and your transcript are all equally weighted for admission. We are test optional, so we don't require ACT or SAT. And then the last, but also very important step is to file your FAFSA, which stands for Free Application for Federal Student Aid. The FAFSA determines your eligibility for federal and institutional grants, which are free money that you do not have to pay back. It also serves as your application for multiple federal loans. We recommend that every student file a FAFSA in order to be considered for need-based grants as well as federal loans. We also have merit-based scholarships, and just by submitting your application, you are automatically considered for those, so there's no need to submit a separate app, uh, scholarship application. And just like with admission, your eligibility for scholarships is determined by your portfolio, essay, and GPA. For junior sophomores and freshmen, you have more time, but a lot of this applies to you as well. It's never too early to connect with our admissions office through a virtual appointment. Now it's also a great time to start developing and organizing your portfolio. We would also love to see you at National Portfolio Days. We recommend that you look into our summer pre-college program, which is called College Preview. Uh, registration for that is open now, and that will be happening on campus in person next summer. So let's talk a little bit more about our portfolio requirements. Um, so the question, what is a portfolio? It sounds intimidating. I know you tend to picture like a big printed book or a bunch of slides or like a massive website. Um, but in essence, a portfolio is just a collection of your artwork. It is a document that should always be updated because your skill sets are always changing. Your portfolio can include anything you have created or made, such as drawings, paintings, photos, inventions, films, animations, comics, sculptures, ceramics, clothing designs, stories, scripts, poetry, etc. If it's creative, you can include it, but keep in mind that the vast majority of your work should be visual work since we are a visual art school. Just keep in mind every art school has different requirements, so if, you're if you are applying to several different art schools, you might have to make a slightly different portfolio for each. At CCD, we are looking for eight to 15 pieces submitted online as part of our application. We look for four main characteristics, technical skill, breadth and diversity, narrative element, and originality. And all of the work over the next few slides is from current CCAD students. So why is a portfolio important? It's like a visual cover letter for an artist. If we know nothing else about you, what do you want us to learn about you through your portfolio? It should show your passions and your interests, your original ideas and narratives, and be memorable. It should also show off your skills as an artist and help us on the admission side determine if you're ready for art school. It also gives you an opportunity to learn about yourself and your interests through the process. So some students choose to have their portfolio reviewed by an admission counselor before submitting their application. In a portfolio review, students can ask questions about their work and hear feedback from someone outside their normal circle. This can not only foster new ideas for a student's artistic practice, but also increase their skills in discussing their work and help you gain confidence. So how to get started. Um, you don't have to focus on classroom assignments. Just think about the art pieces that really excite you or that you really enjoyed making. One great way to be able to sort and access your work efficiently is by organizing all your pieces. So for digital work, put everything in a folder on a computer or a hard drive so that they're clearly labeled and in one place. For traditional non-digital work, um, similar to the digital folder idea, you might wanna put all the physical work in one place so it's easy to find, make sure that it's kept neat and unbent. And then create your own system to mark which ones of those pieces are your favorite. By seeing your work all together, it can be easier to pick the top 10 or 20 that are your favorites and then break it down from there. Portfolio work can be pieces from class or personal projects. 
We also encourage students to keep a sketchbook as a daily practice. This is a safe space for you to try new things and can often lead to amazing portfolio ready work. You can even include sketchbook pages or unfinished work in your portfolio. If you're taking AP art right now, you could repurpose your AP portfolio. However, your college application portfolio doesn't necessarily need a theme or need to be focused around your intended major. A strong portfolio should include a mix of different mediums and subject matter. Since your portfolio can always be edited, it's important not to become attached to some final portfolio idea in your head. You don't have to be committed to a set of artwork forever. You should throw a few pieces together and then start the conversation. So you definitely want to submit the best documentation of your work as possible. So for digital work, save a high, um, high resolution PDF or JPEG. For traditional work, use a good camera, scanner, or high quality phone camera. Using a camera, make sure the items are in focus. Um, we don't want blurry pictures. Work should be well lit, but without glare or harsh shadows. A simple, non-distracting background is important. You don't want anything in the background to distract from your work. On the same note, crop out any edges that aren't a part of the piece. If you want to showcase multiple angles of one piece, you can composite them together into one image or upload a multi-page PDF. This process will be easier once you've gotten to the habit of saving or photog photographing all your work, whether personal or school projects, especially if it's something that you're going to give away or put in an exhibition and you won't always have the finished item with you. So here are some great examples of good documentation. Um, they're simple, they're clean, they're high quality images. This is good documentation of a three-dimensional piece. Um, it's clear, there's nothing distracting in the background. Um, this is a good, clear digital file, so it's not blurry, it's high resolution. And then this is a photograph of a traditional piece, so it's very clear, it's cropped so that nothing but the finished item is showing. And then some more examples, so this is a good way to, this is what I meant by when I said earlier, composite images. So it's multiple angles of the same thing but it's clear from the documentation that these aren't five separate pieces. Um, and then this in the middle is um, digital artwork as is this. So this is another example of kind of taking two things that go together that are part of one project, as well as this, different angles of the same character, but they all go together. And then here are some examples of bad documentation. So this one on the left, um, it's far away, so we can't make out the details, and there's glare on the glass. So it would have been better either to move up or if there was still glare when you were closer to take it out of the frame and either scan it or take a photo and then crop it down. Uh, this one in the middle, the artwork is great, but there's a lot of stuff going on in the background. So this would be better to crop and then rotate so that it was straight. And then this last one, it's kind of unclear whether the focus should be the view of the window or the ceramics or the plant. Um, if the focus is supposed to be the ceramics, the lighting is not great. So these are things that if you come to a portfolio day, we could definitely give you feedback on how to document things a little bit better. And we also want to talk about our virtual first year program. We are hoping that we will be able to hold on campus classes next fall, but in case we are not, or if we are holding on campus classes, but you're not ready to move away from home, you have some medical issues or family issues that require you to be at home, you can enroll in our online first year program. It is asynchronous, which means that you do not need to be at your computer at a specific time. So if you work during the day, um, you can still participate. Um, so in addition to major specific courses, our online course offerings will give you a solid foundation to your success as a student and in the professional world with instruction that will cover key learning areas such as drawing, visual literacy, and contemporary art and design. We will also take math classes that will help in your future as an entrepreneur and writing classes that will help tell your story and that of your creation. So this is a typical uh, fall semester and spring semester schedule. Again, asynchronous, so you don't need to be at your computer at a specific time. Oops, sorry. 
So again, we'd really like to stay in touch with you. So if you want to grab your phone, scan this QR code, you can join our mailing list and we can keep in touch with you. Um, we just need a little bit of information from you. I will give you a minute to do that. And then here is our contact information. We're here to assist as you consider your college options and prepare your application, portfolio, and or financial aid. If you have any questions about CCAD, we are more than happy to answer them. We also have some time now if anyone has some questions. So let me bring this up and see if there's any Q&A questions. So I will give you another minute. Let me go back to this QR code. Bring that up. So again, this is how you would join our mailing list. Just take a picture of that code and then we can get you more information. But our application is available now. Um, we are a private school, so everyone pays the same tuition, whether you're in state or out of state. Um, we will consider all applicants for financial aid once we get your application. All right, well, since we don't have any questions, I think I'll turn it back over to our facilitator to wrap things up. Great job, thank you. Let me just get to this last housekeeping slide here for you all. All right, so thank you for joining us today. When you close this window, there's going to be a quick four question um, survey. If you guys could just take that for us, that would be great. Again, don't forget this is just one of many sessions that we have at wvacrao.org. This is being recorded and will be available in about a week for all of you. Thank you guys for attending.